Another key part of the screen uh, for your hip examination is basic just evaluating his range of motion. You have two sides, so you always want to compare your hip range of motion to the opposite side. And we have a few different motions, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal external rotation that we're going to want to measure. So to start off, we're going to actually have him flex his hip, bend his knee, and here we can see the amount of flexion that he has in this hip is really quite good at probably almost 160 degrees. We can then uh, uh, abduct, which is actually bringing his leg out sideways, adduct, which is going to be crossing over his legs, and we're going to compare that one side to the other, evaluating adduction and abduction to see how much motion they have in, those, in, in that range. Probably of all the motions that I want to assess the most is probably also going to be internal external rotation as a variety of problems about the hip are going to either going to cause pain or loss of motion in those, in those ranges. To test for uh, internal external rotation, basically first with the leg in extension, I'll just log roll the hip internally and externally rotate. While that's not a very specific test, if somebody has a stress fracture, or uh, uh, tightness in some of the muscles that can cause pain in and of itself. More true, true range of motion, or assessment of the flexion or of the internal external rotation, I'll flex the hip 90 degrees and then I'll, I'll hold on to the ankle and I'll bring them into internal rotation of the hip. This is actually where their foot goes out and external rotation of the hip at 90 degrees. The last way to uh, measure internal external rotation is actually ask your patient to roll on their tummy. And this is probably an easier true, mo uh, true uh, measurement of his uh, internal and external rotation because we keep his knees together. And with his knees together, we'll actually now just force his legs into external rotation or we can cross them over into internal rotation. And it's very easy from this angle to be able to measure how much rotation uh, of loss that they may have. In addition to true range of motion uh, of the hip, which we've already me measured, there's other mechanisms to evaluate contractures and tightness in and about the hip. Uh, one of the things that's uh, uh, very key to measure is hamstring tightness. This can actually be measured if you bring the hip up 90 degrees, you'll have the knee bent 90 degrees, and you let the patient relax very comfortably. As they relax, you bring their knee into extension. You'll feel a ver relatively rigid stop every time, and here you can see his hip, hip flexibility, basically his hamstring tightness, fixes him at about 100 degrees short of, uh, or 100 degrees of extension. Normal would actually be probably maybe about 40 degrees short of 180 degrees of extension. So this young man does have some hamstring tightness. To measure for a hip flexion contracture, what we'll do is what we call a Thomas test. And what we're going to have him do is we're going to have him bring both of his hips, bring this guy up too, wrap your arms around your knees, and so he's, he's, what he's doing here is actually stabilizing his pelvis and his lumbar spine. Now we're going to let go of one, keep holding the other, and as we bring this down to extension, you can see that he can bring his leg almost down to the table, all the way down to the table. He has no evidence of a flexion contracture. Now we're going to switch sides, hold that guy up, bring this. Now we're, I'm, if, if, his, if his leg stopped here, would not come down any more than this, this would be a sign that he had a hip flexion contracture on the left side.